Hello, and thank you for attending today's Zenotech webinar. My name is Satoshi Ito from Sexy Medical in Japan, and I'm responsible for all in vivo ADM contract studies for both domestic and international clients. First, I'd like to thank Zenotech for this opportunity and today, and the title of non-clinical pharmacokinetic studies using radio label compound. I would like to talk about what we can offer at our facility. So first, let me introduce ourselves. We Sexy Medical have 57 years of experience in contract admin studies and we offer studies using wide range of animals from mice to monkeys. We like to consider ourselves as a one-stop shop by not only performing pharmacokinetic studies, but also we help synthesize the radio level compound, which is necessary to perform the pharmacokinetic PK studies. Finally, we are committed to animal ethics. We are fully accredited by ALAC since 2014, as you can see here. And this is a picture of our lab, which all our contract studies using radio label compound take place. Here is today's agenda. There are four topics in total. We will go over the basic information on radio label compound and then application of ADAMI studies using radio label compound. First, what is radio label compound? This table shows the typical radiation nuclides used in ADAMI studies. Typical nuclides are carbon-14 and tritium. Carbon-14 has the advantage of being able to directly label the carbon skeleton of a compound by selecting metabolically stable position, making it the most widely used nuclides in small molecule compounds. On the other hand, tritium has a higher specific radioactivity than carbon-14. Therefore, it is used for the studies that require high sensitivity. In addition, since its labeling cost is lower than carbon-14, it is often used in the studies at an exploratory stage. In addition, we offer iodine 1 to 5, indium 111, and sulfur 35, depending on the characteristic of the compound. Next, we will talk about the advantages of using radio label compound. When using an label compound, we can detect parent compound and metabolite, which structure are known in advance, but we can trace unknown metabolites. On the other hand, when using the labeled compound, the radioactivity of the labeled compound is used as a marker, allowing quantitative tracing of all amount, including all metabolites. Thus, the use of radio label compound allow us to obtain more detailed atomic information. Next, I will explain specific activity, which is a unit unique to radio label compound. The specific radioactivity is a radioactivity per unit weight and is expressive in megabecquerel per milligram or megabecquerel per millimole. The maximum specific activity when one carbon in the compound is replaced by carbon-14 
is 2.32 gigabecrel per millimole. Now consider the case of a compound with a molecular weight of 400. Since the molecular weight is 400, dividing 2.32 by 400 gives a maximum theoretical value of 5.80 megabecrel per milligram. In practice, however, the specific activity will not be as high as the theoretical value. If the actual value is 4 megabecrel per milligram, the labeling index will be 70%. And not all compounds will contain carbon-14 in the labeling synthesis. I would also like to note that we offer purification of previously labeled compound. So if you already have radio labeled compound, we can clean it to use for the study instead of the synthesizing it again. Let's move to the preparation of dosing formulations specific to alumni studies using radio labeled compound. The dosing formulation used in the ADMI study with the radio label compound has an additional unit of radioactivity called Becquerel and express it in this way. In our standard design, the radioactivity dose is 3.7 megabecrel per kilogram, and this is an industry standard. As for the dose amount, it is determined by PK and toxicity studies. The dose volume should not exceed the maximum dose volume determined for each animal species from an ethical standpoint. This maximum dose volume is established for each animal species and route of administration. Next, we will explain the specific preparation method of the dosing formulation. The following is a description of the case in which the dose formulation is 100 microcurie per 10 milligram per 5 milliliter. If the specific radioactivity is 4 megabecrel per milligram, the amount of radio label compound corrected is 0 0.925 milligram, which is the radioactivity dose divided by the specific radioactivity. The amount of unlabeled compound is 9.075 milligram, which is a dose minus 0 0.925 milligram. Next, the dose formulation is completed by adding the prescribed amount of vehicle for preparation of the dosing formulation. After the preparation of the dosing formulation, a portion is corrected and measured with a liquid scintillation counter to ensure that the dosing formulation is within the acceptance criteria. Next, I will talk about some of the ADM studies we performed at our facility. These are some of the services we offer at our facilities, absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion of a candidate compound would be studied. I will explain this in a bit more detail starting next page. To evaluate absorption, we measure the radioactivity concentration in blood and plasma. Samples to be corrected are mainly plasma, but blood may also be corrected and measured for compound with high blood cell transferability. 
we will perform serial blood sampling, but the amount of blood collected will be limited to the amount determined by animal ethics. We also measured the concentration of the parent compound by LCMS. And if the difference between the two concentration value is large, it indicates that the compound is easily metabolized. We typically perform free excretion studies. Let me talk about urinary and fecal excretion study. Shown in this picture is a rat metabolic gauge, which we can collect expired air, urine, and feces. Samples are collected up to 168 hours after administration. The basic collection interval is every 24 hours. But urine is also collected on the day of administration. The radioactivity of the collected sample is measured and the cumulative excretion weight is calculated. The total cumulative excretion rate of radioactivity should be at least 95% of the administered dose. The binary excretion study will be performed as well as urinary and fecal excretion study. Rat are kept in a free moving condition with cannulation of the bile duct. In most cases, the collection time is up to 48 hours after administration. The basic collection interval is every 24 hours. However, since excretion into bile is rapid, we do correct twice on the day of the administration generally. The radioactivity of the samples collected in a measured and the cumulative excretion rate is calculated. The absorbed fraction is the sum of the bile and the urinary excretion rate. And the fecal excretion rate can be considered the unabsorbed fraction. Sometimes we suggested the enterohepatic circulation study, which can be the third excretion study. The enterohepatic circulation study is needed if one, the excretion rate in the bile is high and two, urinary excretion rate of intact blood is higher compared to the bile duct granulation rate. Bile collected in the bile excretion study is injected in the, into the duodenum of animals that have undergone granulation procedure so that the bile can be collected. The radioactivity of the injected bile should be at least 0.5 microcurie, and the volume of the bile should be less than 0.1 milliliter. Bolus injection, which is direct injection using syringe, is most common method. We also offer infusion dosing, which is through injection using infusion pump. There are two techniques to evaluate tissue distribution. One is tissue exhibition technique, and the other is QWBA. The QWBA will be explained on the next page. The tissue exhibition is a preferred technique for conducting metabolite analysis of the corrected tissue. For tissue exhibition, the target tissue will be collected from the euthanized animals and the radioactivity of each tissue will be measured using LSC. This is the list of commonly collected tissues. We can also collect tissue that are not on this list. And we will consult with the sponsor to determine which tissues to collect it prior to conducting the study.
The QWBA technique is a recently more popular technique to visually confirm drug distribution. Shown here is an image of an animal section and its autoradiography. We can cover about 30 tissues in our standard method by making three animal sections. The radioactivity on the section is converted to radioactivity concentration using a calibration curve with radioactivity concentration on the x-axis and radioactivity intensity on the y-axis. The area to be quantified is identified on the image and the photosystematic luminescence value is calculated using specialized software. This PSA value is converted to a radioactivity concentration using a calibration curve. Using the urinary and fecal excretion rate data and the distribution study data, the dosimetry for the human mass balance study can be calculated. One point to note here is that the distribution result requires the data from pigmented rat. Data from pigmented rat are necessary to confirm residual to melanin. The effective dose is calculated using the dose, radioactivity dose, and animal body weight according to these data. In the dosimetry report, values are given as effective doses, so it is possible to design the radioactivity dose while taking human safety into consideration. The last study item, metabolite profiling and metabolite identification is presented here. Metabolite profiling uses the HPLC RAD to separate and quantify metabolites. Metabolite identification uses a high resolution MS to estimate structure for pigs separated by HPLC RAD. Next, we show an application of anatomy study using radio level compound. The purpose of this study is to assess the function of MDR1 transporter using quinidine on both SD and MDR1 and knockout rats. Quinidine is a typical substrate of MDR1. We are performing three studies, and those are the absorption study and two distribution studies. This figure shows the plasma radioactivity concentration after administration of quinidine. This indicated that the MDR1 knockout rats show a higher concentration and AUC than the SD rats. This is thought to be due to increased absorption by the knockout of MDR1 gene in the guards. This table shows the tissue radioactivity concentrations after administration of quinidine, which we obtained by tissue excision technique I explained in the previous slide. Since MDR1 is in a rat is knocked out, the excretion of quinidine in the brain is inhibited and the radioactivity concentration in the brain and cerebral spinal fluid is high. This is also observed in the autoradiography, which is in next slide. This is autoradiography after administration of quinidine. The left figure shows autoradiography in knockout rats, and the right figure shows autoradiography in SD rat. As I mentioned earlier, 
we put the animal section in such a way that three sections can cover up approximately 30 tissues. The area surrounded by blue square is the brain and the magnified view of the brain is shown below. It shows the same trend and the tissue radioactivity concentration mentioned area and the radioactivity in the brain tended to be higher in the knockout rats. This will be the last slide. Today, I only talk about ADMI study using radio labeled compound, but we offer a full range of services from discovery phase to the post-marketing phase of drug development. We also offer ROI synthesis, in vitro pharmacokinetic studies, and bioanalysis using LCMS and immunological method. If you are interested, feel free to contact us. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.